The age of the Earth is something we can empirically prove. Geologic rates, radiometric dating, non-radiometric dating, and annular rock clocks all give us a value of around 4.5 billion years. So, something you can't expect can be argued, yes? No, unfortunately it is argued, and in particular by certain members of the monotheistic Abrahamic religions. Usually this is something that I wouldn't tackle, they can believe what they wish, but when you try and use maths to prove that the Earth is not 4.5 billion years old, this sounded right up my street. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Foil Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick plug of the old Simon Dan podcast YouTube channel. Yesterday I released the episode about psychic mediums where Wolf, the talented guy who plays the agent, cold reads cats. It can't be missed. You can find it here or I'll leave a link in the description. Right, back to today's video where Robert Gauss tries to use the population growth formula to prove that the Earth is young. I like maths a lot. So let's see what we can see, shall we? Away you go, Robert. Hi, Robert Ergoss here again, I'm trying to basically prove the Bible is true through either talking about stories that foreshadow Jesus or talking about math or science that proves Jesus. Um, so, as expected, Robert wants to prove the age of the earth as something that is literally true in the Bible. Fair enough. If he has evidence, I will listen, especially if it involves maths. So today I'm going to talk about a population growth formula and we'll see how it kind of says that the earth can't be that old. Um, the formula, written in red over here, uh, A equal P times E raised to the RT. Okay, you can't see that very well. Here it is in big and I'll leave it in the corner as he discusses this. Um, so, P is a starting population, uh, E is Euler's number, which is uh, equal to 2.718, um, and then we've got a power here, and the power uh, has two um, numbers in it. Uh, one number is the rate of growth, or the growth rate, and the other number is the time period. So we multiply the growth rate by the time period, and that's what we're going to raise E to that power and we're going to multiply that by the starting population. So population growth formulas are usually used to figure out how much a population would grow over a relatively short amount of time. This is because the rate of growth is often very different during different time periods. And we'll end up with an ending population. Um, we're going to do that at several intervals, uh, starting year one, then going to year 200, and then going to year 2000, and then the year 4000. Um, and actually I've done some more years, but uh, I don't have enough board space and I didn't want to remove my map here. Okay, it looks like he's using the traditional held belief amongst young Earth creationists that the Earth is only 6,000 years old. Fine. So I think you'll get enough of the, the story from this. Um, so P's gonna be eight. Why eight? Is that the amount of people that came off the ark? It seems like an odd number to begin with. Of course, the human population evolved in Africa between 200 and 300,000 years ago, with several different hominid species existing before this as far back as 7 million years. There certainly wasn't only eight individuals. We're going to use a rate of growth of 0 0.007. Um, throughout time, growth rate does change. Um, in some parts of the world, growth rate's higher, some parts of the world, growth rate's lower. I looked up what the growth rate's been for the last few years for the whole Earth, and it's somewhere around 0 0.007. So using the growth rate for the last, uh, I forget how many years it is, um, that's what I'm using, okay? Now, like I said, starting with eight, and the so the, this number here, the 0 0.007. And this is your next mistake. The current growth rate, or at least the growth rate in the last few years, is much higher than it was 6,000 years ago. But we'll have a look in that in a bit. It's gonna go into R. And this T is gonna be these different spots on the timeline, okay? And what we get for year one, of course, is 
roughly eight people because we started with eight people. Um, so after one year, there were still only eight people. Right. Year 200, we're going to get uh, 32.4 people. So after 200 years, there's only 32 people. The issue here, of course, is that in your scenario, with that starting population, the growth rate would have been much, much higher at the beginning. Then you have to take into account the obvious inevitability of incest. This would have caused some serious genetic issues further down the line. This is something I genuinely don't understand about young Earth creationists. They just seem to gloss over incest. So we had 32.4 people in year 200. In year 2000, we're getting um, 9,620,834.3 people. 9 million after 2,000 years. Right, that seems a bit more reasonable. The problem, of course, is the growth rate that he has picked. As I said earlier, this is a value that constantly changes through the ages. In the 1700s, for example, the growth rate was only 0.1 to 0.15%. This means that instead of 0.007 for his growth rate, he'd have 0.00125. With this growth rate, his starting population after 2,000 years would only be 97. And you'll see the issue with this growth rate after his 4,000 year value. So just in 2,000 years, we got into the uh, 9.6 million ballpark. I had a hard time drawing this graph, by the way. <laughs> really? It's a line. Um, year 4,000, we got into the uh, year 4,000, we got into 11 trillion, 570 billion, 56 million, 514,331.8 people. And this is where we get to the crux of Robert's argument. Basically, because there aren't 11 trillion people on this planet after 4,000 years, then a 4.5 billion year old Earth is inconceivable. That's in year 4,000. If you go to year 5,000, we get a really large number. <laughs> Let's see, how many commas this got? One, two, three, four, five commas. So um, it's a really big number. And uh, so, I'm just going to write year 5,000 up here. So um, hopefully you see that the, the um, line goes like this and it shoots up real high. Yes, it's called exponential growth, something which hasn't and isn't happening with the human race. This is a world population clock. It uses population data to predict growth rates. And as such, you can see the population of Earth change before your eyes. If we scroll down to the growth rate, you'll see that it's currently falling. Another example as to how it's always changing. Let's look at his 5,000 year total, shall we? Okay, it started getting to the point my calculator couldn't calculate it. But it did calculate it. It either can't or it can. There's no halfway with that. Um, so that's a really big number. That's just in 5,000 years. If, if we've been here, if this planet has been here millions and millions of years, as evolution says, we got a problem. No, we don't. Um, even if you throw a lot of wars, uh, a lot of natural disasters, it grow, that growth rate grows so fast that the earth can't handle being millions of years old. Um, let's say there was a lot of wars and a lot of natural disasters. There should be skulls everywhere. Hang on, are you saying wars and natural disasters aren't real because there isn't a load of skulls everywhere? Good job that as a species we figured out what to do with our dead. Um, because this number is huge, right? And that's just in 5,000 years. Uh, being a Bible believer, and uh, believing that the earth was created in six days, 
I know all you evolutionists are going to have a problem with me right off the bat. Um, this number is even bigger, 6,000 years. Um, and that's with a modest growth rate. It's not even a 1%. It's a 0.7% growth rate. And that is not a modest growth rate in the context of growth rates across history. Let's skip to his summary, shall we, and see what he says. I hope that this helps you understand that the world can, could not have sustained that many thousands of years with the human population. So if the planet is billions of years old or millions of years old. Billions. Um, when the human population finally came on the planet, we should have skulls, dead bodies everywhere. It, it, this population growth um, basically says so. Um, especially if it was faster in the past, but now it's slower. It was faster in the past, but not as much in the past as you think. In the 1970s, that is when the human growth rate peaked. The growth rate thousands of years ago was much, much, much slower than yours. And what I used in my math was the slower rate. So, like I said, I hope, hopefully this helps you understand population growth and how that means that the Bible is probably true and the earth cannot be, I believe it's true, but I'm just giving you a benefit of the doubt that the earth cannot be millions and billions of years. But the issue is your growth rate, as we discussed, and your starting population. There is no way you can pin that number down. Evolution doesn't work like that. It doesn't supply the earth with a select amount of people at the beginning. If you're gonna try and debunk the age of the earth with these calculations, then you can't input your beliefs into these calculations, which is what I think you did with that starting eight people. Really, really enjoyed this one today. Um, always loved Tim for Tuesdays involving maths. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do drop a like on the video and subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow night for the live comments. And on Friday, I'll be setting my own monetary challenge to the flat earthers. See you then. <laughs>